Hello everyone, in this video I will be reviewing this Tanda RX9 Pro Wi-Fi 6 router. So let me start first by the specifications and the connections of this router. To talk first about the specifications of this router, so this is a Wi-Fi 6 router. It is an AX3000, meaning that it has an aggregate speed of both the two bands, the 5 GHz band and the 2.4 GHz band of 3000 gigabits per second. And also this router has a dual core CPU, which is 1.6 GHz. It has WPA3 security ability. And also it works on the 160 MHz channel. And this is a very good thing for a router that is in this price range. It also has a OFDMA technology, which allows it to use the bandwidth more efficiently between the devices. It also has a TWT technology, which allows the battery of mobile devices to last longer. On the back of the router, you have all the inputs and the controls, and there are not many. So here you have the power input, and this is the WPS and the reset button, so it works for both. And here it has the one port, which is the same color, unfortunately, as the other ports. And it has three LAN ports only. And one of the LAN ports, the last one, is for IPTV also. It doesn't have any USB input, and it doesn't have a power on-off button. To connect the router to the internet and to your PC to set it up, you need to connect the one port of the router to your ISP's modem. And then you need to connect one of the LAN ports of the router to the network port of your PC. And this is what I've done now. So I'm gonna show you how to set it up very quickly. Open your web browser on the PC where you connected the router and go to this website, tandawifi.com and hit enter. And because the router is new, you'll get this quick setup wizard. So click on start. And then here choose the type of connection for your internet service provider. For me, I know that it is a dynamic IP address. So I chose it and then click next. And here it will ask you to give your Wi-Fi network a name and a password. So here, let me put my Wi-Fi network to KST Wi-Fi. And then for the password, I'm going to put a password, any password now for the purpose of this video. Of course, choose a strong password. So here also it asks you if you want to set the same password for your management also for this router. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to put the same password, but for security best practices, it's better to put another password. So here I'm going to check on yes, and then I'm going to click on next. This is all you need to set up your router like this. So now it will create the network, and then you can connect to the network directly afterwards. When the wizard finishes, it will show you what are the Wi-Fi networks that it created. So here, it created one for the 2.4 gigahertz band and one for the 5 gigahertz band. So click on more now. Here, it will ask you to log in to the router. Remember, we have put strong pass one, two, three. And notice here the two green lights. Here, it means that the 2.4 gigahertz band is working and the 5 gigahertz also band is working. So here on the left, you have all the menu configurations of this router. I'm not going to go through each one of them, but I'm going to show you the most important ones. Wi-Fi settings here. And on this page, you have something called channel and bandwidth. Let's go into it. And this is important here because when I was testing this router, I couldn't get my Roku TVs to connect to the 5 GHz band if I left the 5 GHz band Wi-Fi channel on auto here. So I got to put it on channel 48 and I got it working like this. So if you have trouble connecting to the 5 GHz band, make sure that here you change the channels and test the channels so that your devices can connect to the 5 GHz band of your router. And here also you have transmit power. If you want to enable or disable WPS, you can also put this router in an access point mode. You have a guest network that you can enable also. You have basic parental control here. So if you want to add the parental control, for instance, you click here, you can choose the schedule device by device, and you can blacklist or whitelist websites here. And under advanced settings, you have an important setting called bandwidth control. So this here, you can limit the bandwidth per device. And you can do the same also for the guest network. I forgot to tell you about it before. So you can here limit the bandwidth for the guest network, which is a very good thing also. And here also you have something called Tenda Wi-Fi app. If you click on it, you can here scan this OCR code and you can install 
the Tanda Wi-Fi app on your smartphone also so that you can manage the router through your smartphone. And you have also a bunch of other settings here. And you have the system settings also here so you can change your IP address, your internal LAN IP address, you can reboot the router and this sort of stuff. By the way, if you're liking this video so far, it would help a channel a lot if you drop me a comment. And this way also I can answer your questions. And also please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. So let's start now the speed and range tests. And for you to be able to compare the standard to a similar router, I'm going to be performing these tests against a TP-Link Archer AX55, which is also an AX3000 Wi-Fi 6 router. The first test I'm going to be doing is copying a large file from a PC on the network to my PC. And both PCs are connected to the router with a Wi-Fi 6 connection. The purpose of this test is to determine the shear speed of the router. And here the tender is copying the file at approximately 20 megabytes per second. And I repeated this test many times to get this average speed. And here the TP-Link has a slight advantage where it is copying the file at a rate of 30 megabytes per second. This next test here is to test the internet speed. So here my network is not loaded and I'm testing the internet speed. I have a speed of 30 megabits per second download and 10 megabits per second upload. And here both routers give the same result and they are performing to the maximum. And both routers are approximately 32, 33 megabits per second speed. The following test is more of a real world usage test. So here I loaded my internet connection. I have two TVs streaming 4K movies. I have two iPads playing YouTube videos and I have also my Amazon Echo playing music. And here you notice that the routers, of course, the speed will drop and the PC that I'm using to perform this test is also connected to the router with a Wi-Fi 6 connection. And here I think that both routers cope well with this load. So the Tenda is still giving 14 megabits per second speed and the TP-Link is not far behind. It's 13 megabits per second. And I repeated this test also many times to get the average results that you see. To test the range, I live in an apartment building. So I went out of my apartment and I went in the hallway to the stairwell. And the tender started dropping the connection after 40 yards. So I stopped at 40 yards just at the beginning of the stairwell. And it was barely connecting there. And it was giving speeds, as you see, around the 3, 4 megabits per second. Whereas the tip link stayed connected until the 50 yards mark. And it was still giving around 17 megabits per second connection speed at 50 yards. At the end, let me give you what I like and what I don't like about this router. First, this router is really affordable for an AX3000 Wi-Fi 6 router and it has the latest technologies like OFDMA, TWT and also it has a good speed, good internet speed and it also has a good smartphone application and it is easy to configure. Now, what I don't like about it is that it doesn't have a USB port and also it doesn't have an on-off button. Maybe this is nitpicking from me. And also it doesn't have VPN configuration. So you cannot configure it as a VPN client and you cannot also configure it as a VPN server, at least at the time of this video. Maybe Tenda will release a new firmware with these settings because I saw in some documentations the same router talking about the VPN, but I searched everywhere in the web app, in the smartphone app, and I didn't find this feature. And also for the range, they can do better. I kept the range at maximum high when I done the test and I done the test many times, but the range wasn't enough. But that being said, the range inside the house was good. I have a 1200 square feet house and it covered all the house. Now the decision to buy this router or not depends on your needs. If you don't need the USB port, you don't need VPN also on the router, and you don't need advanced parental control and security controls, this router is really good for what it offers, especially at this price point. So I hope that you enjoyed my video and found it useful. If you did, please share it, subscribe to my channel, and give this video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it, and this will help the channel greatly. And this way you'll not miss any future videos I make. I'm Eloy, I want to thank you all for watching.